Hello everyone, I am Dr. Ashok Jaiswal. As we all know, on 14th November 2022, the Global Initiative for Chronic Obstructive Lung Disease, that is the GOLD, has released its 2023 reports for the diagnosis, management and prevention of COPD. And today we are going to discuss about what are the changes brought upon by 2023 reports compared to 2022 reports. So first, an important difference which is brought into the definition of COPD itself in chapter one. We used to define COPD earlier as a common preventable treatable disease characterized by persistent respiratory symptoms and airflow limitation due to airway and or alveoli abnormality usually caused by you know significant exposure to noxious particles or gases and also getting influenced by host factors including abnormal lung development but now we will be defining copd differently as per goal 2023 so some important terminologies are incorporated now into the definition so very appropriately now goal 2023 says that copd is a heterogeneous lung condition characterized by chronic respiratory symptoms like dyspnea cough sputum production exacerbation due to abnormalities of airways like bronchitis or bronchiolitis and or abnormalities of alveoli like emphysema that cause persistent often progressive airflow obstruction so important terminologies to be underlined are heterogeneous disease having persistent often progressive airflow obstruction 2023 also introduced a proposed taxonomy for copd i would say an etiotype based taxonomy for copd so this proposed terminologies are COPDG. That means it indicates the COPD due to genetic abnormalities. For example, people having alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. So those COPD will fall into the category of COPDG. Then COPDD means the COPD due to abnormal lung development. COPDC, C stand for cigarette smoking. So COPD due to exposure to tobacco smoke including in utero or via passive smoking copd due to exposure to vaping or e-cigarette use or cannabis consumption they all will fall into the category of copd c copd p means copd due to exposure to household pollution ambient air pollution smoke and etc copd i it will indicate the copd which is associated with infections and copd a means copd and asthma so now we will no more use a term echo that is asthma copd overlap is no more proposed so we have a new terminology of copd a then COPD U, that is COPD of unknown cause. Now, goal 2023 also brings a new opportunities for us to diagnose COPD earlier and treat appropriately. And hence, it incorporates two new terminologies. One is pre-COPD and second is PRISM. So what is pre-COPD? We may have individuals who are presenting with respiratory symptoms which are indicative of COPD may have structural lung lesion like emphysema may have physiological abnormalities including low to normal FEV1 gas trapping or hyperinflation or reduced lung diffusion capacity but without airflow obstruction on spirometry when you do spirometry you find FEV1 to FEC ratio more than 0.7 post bronchodilation, which is normal. That means patient cannot be categorized 
under COPD, but still having respiratory symptoms and or structural lung allusion and or physiological abnormality. So those individuals will fall into the category of pre-COPD. What is the term PRISM? Now PRISM stands for preserved ratio. That means normal FEV1 to FEC ratio more than 0.7 post bronchodilation but impaired spirometry. That means having some spirometry abnormality that is reduced FEV1. So a people having preserved ratio impaired spirometry that category will be termed as PRISM. So both these terminologies pre-COPD and PRISM they are indicative of increased future risk of developing airflow obstruction over the period of time. Now what is new in chapter 2 that is chapter of diagnosis and assessment of COPD. In goal 2022 we all have learned ABCD assessment tool. What is that ABCD assessment tool? When patient comes to you with indicative symptomatology of COPD, you do spirometry and on spirometry, if ratio FEV1 to FEC is less than 0.7, you confirm the diagnosis of COPD, right? After that, you do the uh, assessment of airflow limitation. That is the severity of airflow limitation based on the FEV1 percentage predicted value. So you will categorize the patient in gold 1, 2, 3 or 4 categories that is mild, moderate, severe, very severe airflow limitation based on FEV1. Once you do that, then you would do the assessment based on symptoms and the assessment of the risk of exacerbations. And for this, we uh, already learned uh, from 2022 gold that based on symptomatology, you will have a two category of patient. One MMRC 0 to 1 and CAT less than 10. That means the patient having a low burden of symptoms. On the other hand, the patient will have a high burden of symptoms like MMRC uh, more than or equal to 2 or CAT more than or equal to 10. Then based on the exacerbation history, you will categorize the patient into two class. Like the patient having history of 0 or one moderate exacerbation not leading to uh, hospitalization. On the other hand, the patient having history of two or more than two moderate exacerbation or one or more than one exacerbation leading to hospital admission. So based on this symptom and history of exacerbation, we used to categorize patient into A, B, C, D category. A and C indicates low symptom burden, B and D high symptom burden, A and B low exacerbation risk, C and D used to be a high exacerbation risk. So that is what the GOLD 2022, but now what is GOLD 2023? Very important change which is brought into. Now as per GOLD 2023, the category C and D has been merged to one new category that is called E category. So E category, it highlights the clinical relevance of exacerbation. So C and D is removed. E has entered. So now we have A, B, E assessment tool. So patient is at high risk of exacerbation irrespective of low symptom or high symptom, they will be categorized in one group that is E. In chapter 4, there are differences in the management of stable COPD proposed by 2023 reports. We all have learned this initial pharmacological treatment proposed by Gould 2022 based on category A, B, C, D classification. I mean, if the patient is in group A, then you would give any bronchodilator, whether it is beta agonist or muscarinic antagonist, long acting, short acting, whatever. So in GOLD 2023, that recommendation remains unchanged. 
any bronchodilator. Now in 2022, for group B people, the guideline recommended any long-acting bronchodilator, either LABA or LAMA. But now it is no more monotherapy. Now guideline says, whole 2023 says, combination of LABA and LAMA is better than single long-acting bronchodilator in this group of patients because they have a high burden of symptoms and the combination works better than monotherapy with long-acting bronchodilators. So now here is a change for group B. It was LABA or LAMA, but now it is combination LABA-LAMA. Now what about C and D? As I just told you, group uh, this goal 2023, they have abolished group C and D. And it has uh, a new category has been created that is E. So earlier there was an option of LAMA for group C and for group D either LAMA or LABA LAMA or LABA ICS. But now for new category group E, the guideline recommends LABA and LAMA combination. So no more place for plain LAMA, no more place for LABA ICS combination. As you can see here, they are removed. Now for group E guideline also says, consider triple combination of LABA LAMA ICS if the patient's blood eosinophil count is more than 300. So in patient having high risk of exacerbation, eosinophil more than 300, go for triple combination. Why? Because the recent evidence is like ethos trial. It showed a significant 49% reduction in the risk of mortality with triple combination of LABA LAMA ICS. So what about uh, follow-up pharmacological treatment? As we have uh, learned in Gold 2022, that follow-up pharmacological treatment will depend uh, on whether it is a symptom predominant based uh, COPD or exacerbation predominant based uh, COPD. But there are some differences recommended by Gold 2023 from Gold 2022. As you can see here, if the patient is having predominant dyspnea symptom and he or she is on a monotherapy bronchodilator LABA or LAMA, then guideline says switch to combination of LABA and LAMA. Now, in case the patient is having predominant exacerbation COPD and your patient is on monotherapy with a LABA or LAMA, then look into blood eosinophil count. If blood eosinophil count is less than 300, then switch to LABA-LAMA combination. And if blood eosinophil count is more than 300, then switch from monotherapy to triple combination of LABA-LAMA and ICS combination. Again, this is based on the evidences which indicates the mortality benefit uh, in patient having exacerbation on monotherapy, having eosinophil count more than 300, then there is a significant reduction in the risk of mortality with a triple drug combination. Now, if the patient has history of exacerbation and already on two drug combination, LABA, LAMA, then again look into eosinophil count. If eosinophil count is more than 100, then switch from double to triple combination LABA LAMA ICS. And if eosinophil count is less than 100, then add either roflumilast or an antimicrobial agent azithromycin to ongoing LABA LAMA therapy. Now, a final change which is brought into chapter 5 in the definition of exacerbation. So, earlier we used to define exacerbation of COPD as an acute worsening of respiratory symptom that results in additional therapy as per goal 2022. But we have a new definition of exacerbation of COPD. Now we call it ECOPD, that is exacerbation of COPD. And it is defined as an event 
characterized by increased dyspnea and or cough and sputum that worsens in less than 14 days. So this is important. The symptom should have worsened in last 14 days and that may be associated with tachypnea and or tachycardia and it is often associated with certain local or systemic inflammation caused by either infection, pollution or some other insult to the airway. So, if the symptoms are worsening, if symptoms are increasing over the period of time, more than 14 days of time, then we can't call it exacerbation. So, it is better to call it a disease progression. So, for exacerbation, the symptom worsening should happen within 14 days, may be associated with tachypnea or tachycardia and associated with certain inflammatory changes condition like infection, pollution and other insult to the airways. So these are what the differences which are brought to us by GOLD 2023 compared to GOLD 2022. Thank you very much for your patient attention.